Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the last lecture, we learned about how we can use a 2D steady state diffusion problem and use MATLAB for that. Today, we are going to take one small step forward. So, so far we have been looking into the steady state problems and the way in which we arrived at the discretized version and this iterative procedure was that we write that i comma j variable and use that particular formula as an iterative procedure. But when you have an unsteady case, you have a time derivative terms. And what that means is, if you know how to discretize this time term, and we already know how to discretize the space term, then using this time term or the time derivative term, we can create an iterative procedure for that. So to give you an example, we'll start with the same diffusion problem in two dimensional but rather than considering that this problem is uh, steady, we'll consider that this problem is an unsteady problem. So what that means is, so if you remember, the diffusion steady state problem was del square t over del x square plus del square t over del y square being zero. So when I say that the problem is unsteady, it means that we want to study the time evolution of the flow field or of the temperature field. While the steady state means that the field itself, it doesn't depend on time. So unsteady problems, that's why they always have a time derivative terms in that. And in the case of uh, 2D diffusion problem, we have del T over the, the first derivative of temperature with respect to time or the first derivative of any field with respect to time here where the field is the one that is getting diffused in two dimensional. So we'll discretize this time derivative term the same way that we discretize the space derivatives. So this is a first order derivative so you can use any kind of a differencing scheme but one of the most simplest scheme to start with is the forward difference. As you know that uh, time is a one way variable, time doesn't really go back. So if you have the flow at this particular time step, the only way it should be proceeding is to go to the next time step. So the method that works or that the method that makes sense here is the forward step method, where we say that we know what the variable is here and we want to evaluate what the variable would be here. So typically we represent uh, the time step as number of levels. So let's say this is n, this is n plus 1, this is n plus 2 and so on. Where the final state would be the steady state. And of course there would be like 1, 2, 3 and so forth. Where n is like a general variable. Like in the space we used to consider this i comma j or i as an index or a variable that we wanted to use for this representation in space. Similarly, generally in time, we take this variable to be n. So whenever I would talk that uh, I have the solution at uh, the nth time step, and I want to evaluate the solution at n plus one. So if we look at this, let us say del t over del t, the first term, therefore, so it means that I know the value of t n here, and I want to evaluate what is t n plus 1. So if I use a forward difference scheme, I can write where this particular spacing between the two time levels is delta t. And for the space, we'll use the same central difference uh, scheme for the second order der derivatives, considering that the point is general point is represented by i comma j. And I'll modify these time derivatives term as well because. Whenever we talk about a particular point and its derivative in time, we say that the spatial location is fixed. Again, remember what these partial derivative were in the first place. So the variable that is partially differentiated with respect to another variable, let us say del t over del small t, it means that the space variables that are x and y, they are supposed to remain constant. And similarly, if I consider del square t over del x square, it means that the variable time and y, because now we have three variables in picture. So whenever we take the partial derivative with respect to the first variable, it means the second and the third variable would remain the same. So it means that this particular differentiation it is on the same spatial location. 
And similarly, if I want to write del square t over del x square, first I'll write in the same way that we wrote before. So this is simply the spatial derivative, nothing special. And we'll put this n on the top because we know the nth value. So let us say n equals to zero. That means we know the initial solution. And n plus one means that we want to know the solution at first time step. Similarly, when you know the solution at the first time step, n equal to one, then n plus one would be two. So this way these iterations would be done. So you know an initial solution, then you go for the higher time step. And you keep going until you get the steady state solution or until let's say you want to evaluate the solution at time equal to four seconds. So you keep doing that until you reach that value. And similarly, the del square t over del y square could be written, which would be t i j plus one n minus two t i j n plus t i j minus one n divided by delta y square. So if we combine these terms together and we put it in the original governing equation, which is the now unsteady version of two dimensional diffusion, you can easily see that this particular would be written as T i comma j n divided by delta t. And we'll assume that the delta x is equal to delta y, that is we are using a uniform mesh. So that would bring a little bit more simplification. That would be plus T i minus one comma j n plus T i j plus one comma n plus T i j minus one comma n minus four T i j divided by, let us say this is equal to h, f square equals to zero. So we have only one term, let us say n plus one, which is actually that we want to evaluate using this discretization procedure. And we have all these terms that are at the time level n. So what we want to do is we want to segregate these two terms on either side of this equal to sign so that we get a nice equation that we can further code in MATLAB. And if you go by that, we get t i j n plus one equals to, so I'm taking these all the terms on this side. T i j comma n plus delta t over h square. And let us say this, I'm calling this big thing as a just for the simplicity here. And that's my discretization version of the governing equation. So the way in which the calculations are proceeded now are very simple. So you initialize this uh, nth time step solution or you initialize this zero time step solution. And that means n equals to zero. And you also have these boundary conditions. Remember you have three boundary conditions of zero at uh, left, bottom and right and you have this top boundary being one. And once you apply this equation, then you get the n plus one. And similarly, keep going unless you get the steady state solution or any particular time that you're interested in. So there is one important aspect about stability in uh, CFD computations. So you would see that, suppose you fix the grid of uh, 50 by 50, that means your grid spacing H is fixed. Now you try to see when you put the delta t equal to one, let's say, then you'll see that your solutions would not converge and uh, you would get what is called as NAN or not a number. And that is one of the very commonly found bugs in CFD computations. So one of the ways to mitigate this problem is to reduce the value of delta t. And what that would do is it would try to stabilize your solution. We will talk about stability a little bit later when we understand how to discretize these equations properly and then we'll come to different kind of criteria that are used to determine how stable or whether your, whether your procedure calculation procedure would be stable or not. So for now, try with a slightly higher value, let's say one of delta t and you'll see that you need a very small value of delta t because uh, in these kind of uh, diffusion problems, you, you have this coefficient of diffusion that I haven't shown here, 
but there's a coefficient of diffusion into the picture which is actually combined into the delta t part what i mean to say is typically you have this uh, some kind of gamma over here so the value of this uh, diffusion coefficient so in case of fluid flow for example you have this molecular diffusion or the kinematic viscosity that uh, plays the role of the diffusion coefficient and the value of this diffusion coefficient is really very small approximately of the order of 10 to the power minus 5 or minus 6 and that is why until the moment your delta t which now for this example which now includes that diffusion coefficient has that small value you wouldn't be able to get a steady state solution or even a stable solution you will see that maybe after two or three or maybe ten time steps you would start to see some funny contours into the picture and your error that would be calculated using the same uh, procedure that we saw earlier it would be NAN. So give it a shot and uh, take it as your assignment because you already have uh, an understanding of how to solve 2D steady state diffusion. You simply have to add this time derivative term. We have already seen what the uh, what the discretized version of the equation is. Now there's only one small change that is needed to be done in the code and that is where you have these two for loops in the picture. If you remember, we have one for loop for i, then one for loop for j, and then we had this discretized version of the equation. So this, this discretized version would change with this new unsteady version and everything else would more or less remain the same. So give it a go, see what value of delta t you find that is stable enough for that particular grid. Again, the combination of delta t and the delta x or grid spacing that determines this is uh, in together it's called as a CFL number which you would come later but these value together determine whether your solution procedure would be stable or not. So give it a shot if you have any particular problems feel free to write in the comments and you are free to choose whatever grid size you want but in general rule of thumb is the finer your grid is the smaller delta t you would want to resolve that particular stable solution. So I wish you very best and uh, until then I'll see you in the next lecture where we would be looking at the particular solution here and I'll also talk about the importance and the criteria that I was discussing here which is called as the CFL number. So I'll see you next time.